Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Ask Claude. Today we're diving into something that could completely change how we think about web security. You've probably heard claims that apps built on ICP are unhackable compared to traditional websites, but is that actually true or is it just marketing hype? Let's find out. Claude, break this down for me. Great question, and it's important to be precise here. Before we dive in, let me be absolutely clear. This conversation is for educational and informational purposes only. It does not constitute cybersecurity advice, technical consulting, or financial guidance. While ICP offers significant security advantages over traditional Web 2 infrastructure, no system is completely secure. Now, to answer your question, no system is completely unhackable. That's a fundamental truth in cybersecurity. However, ICP does offer fundamentally different security properties than traditional Web 2 infrastructure, which significantly reduces certain types of attacks. All right, so what makes traditional Web2 apps vulnerable in the first place? The vulnerabilities are staggering. Cybercrime is projected to cost the world $10.5 trillion annually by 2025. In 2024, the global average cost of a data breach reached $4.88 million per incident, up 10% from the previous year. Organizations experienced an average of 1,636 cyber attacks per week. That's a 30% increase year over year. And here's the scary part. 98% of web applications are vulnerable to attacks. In 2024, over 40,000 common vulnerabilities and exposures were published. About a, that's about 113 CVEs every single day. What causes all these vulnerabilities? Multiple factors. First, 68% of data breaches involve human error, system administrators, developers, or employees falling for phishing attacks, using weak passwords or misconfiguring systems. Second, 72% of web application vulnerabilities are due to flaws in the coding itself. Third, the average time to identify and contain a breach is 277 days. That's over nine months where attackers can roam freely in your systems. That's terrifying. So how is ICP different? ICP fundamentally changes the security model through something called canisters. These are smart contracts that combine Combine code and data. Here's the key difference. A canister state can only be modified through messages that are included in the blockchain. This means they're tamper-proof by design. Wait, explain tamper-proof more clearly. What does that actually mean? In a traditional Web2 application, if an attacker gains access to your server through a vulnerability, stolen credentials, or social engineering, they can directly modify your code, inject malware, steal data, or completely take over your system. With ICP canisters, this is architecturally impossible. The execution is governed by the Internet Computer Protocol itself. No one, not even the developers, can directly modify the canister's state outside of the blockchain's consensus mechanism. So it's like the code is protected by the entire network? Exactly. Every modification has to go through the blockchain, which means it's cryptographically verified and auditable. When software in a web browser submits a call to ICP, the transaction result is signed by a chain key signature, proving both that it was produced correctly and that it's temper-free. Okay, but what about ransomware? That's a huge problem for traditional systems. Massive problem. In 2024, ransomware accounted for 59% of all cyber attacks. The average ransomware payment reached $2 million, and 94% of organizations paid the initial ransom demand. Demand. With ICP's canister architecture, the sophisticated mathematical frameworks protect against common digital threats like ransomware and prevent backdoors from being created. The data isn't sitting on a server that someone can access and encrypt. It's distributed across a decentralized network with state modifications controlled by the protocol. What about SQL injection attacks or cross-site scripting? Those are common vulnerabilities. Those attack vectors largely don't exist on ICP. SQL injection works by exploiting poorly sanitized database inputs in traditional web applications, but canisters don't use traditional databases. They use WebAssembly modules with orthogonal persistence. Cross-site scripting attacks exploit the trust relationship between a user and a website, but ICP's architecture means the entire application runs from chain with cryptographic verification. So you're saying all the common web vulnerabilities just don't apply? Many of the most common ones, yes. Remember, 72% of web application vulnerabilities are coding flaws, but canisters are compiled to WebAssembly and executed in a deterministic, verified environment. The Internet Computer Protocol itself enforces security at the protocol level. It's like having an immune system built into the infrastructure rather than relying on external security measures. This sounds too good to be true. What are the limitations? There must be some. Absolutely. Let's be very clear about what ICP doesn't protect against. First, smart contract bugs. If developers write flawed logic into their canister code, that's still exploitable. ICP makes the execution tamper-proof, but it doesn't fix bad code. Second, governance attacks. If a canister is controlled by a DAO and the DAO is compromised, attackers could pass malicious proposals. Third, front-end vulnerabilities. If users interact through a compromised client, they could be tricked into authorizing malicious transactions. So the unhackable claim is misleading? 
Yes and no. It's more accurate to say ICP provides tamper-proof execution and cryptographically verifiable state. The canister itself can't be hacked in the traditional sense. No one can break into the server, inject code, or steal data directly. But that doesn't mean the application is immune to all attacks. It means the entire threat model is different. Can you give me a concrete example of what ICP prevents versus what it doesn't? Sure. ICP prevents someone breaking into AWS servers and stealing your database, someone injecting malware into your web server, ransomware encrypting your files, DDoS attacks, taking down your infrastructure, admin credential theft, giving someone root access. But ICP doesn't prevent users being fished into authorizing bad transactions, bugs in the smart contract logic, compromised developer keys being used to upgrade a canister maliciously, social engineering attacks on end users. So it's more secure, but not invulnerable. Exactly. The security model is fundamentally stronger. Think of it this way. In traditional Web 2, you're defending against thousands of known attack vectors, all those CVEs I mentioned, plus zero-day exploits. With ICP, Entire categories of attacks simply don't apply because the architecture is different. You're not running code on a server someone can hack into. You're running code on a decentralized network where every state change is cryptographically verified. How does this compare to the cost of traditional security? The difference is dramatic. Organizations spend an average of $4.88 million per breach. They invest in firewalls, antivirus software, intrusion detection systems, security teams, compliance audits, and still get breached. With ICP, much of that security is built into the protocol itself. You don't need to protect against server breaches because there are no servers to breach. This security is inherent to the architect. Bottom line, is unhackable the right word? No, unhackable is misleading and potentially dangerous. No system is truly unhackable, but tamper-proof at the infrastructure level is accurate. ICP makes certain classes of attacks architecturally impossible. It's not that hackers can't attack ICP applications, it's that the attacks they've used successfully for decades against traditional web infrastructure simply don't work. They need to find entirely new attack vectors specific to blockchain architecture. See, that's a crucial distinction. It really is. The cybersecurity landscape for traditional Web 2 is catastrophic. With 4,000 cyber attacks happening daily, 98% of web applications vulnerable, and breaches costing a projected $10.5 trillion annually, the status quo is unsustainable. ICP offers a different model. Not perfect, not invulnerable, but architecturally resistant to the attack patterns that plague the internet for decades. So the future of web security might not look like better firewalls. It might look like fundamentally different architecture. Precisely, just as we're not making analog phones more secure, we move to digital encryption. We're not making floppy disks more reliable, we move to solid state storage. Similarly, we might not make traditional servers secure enough, we might move to decentralized, tamper-proof execution environments. ICP represents that architectural shift. Whether it's the winning implementation remains to be seen, but the principle is sound. Build security into the foundation rather than trying to bolt it on afterward. Wow, this really puts things in perspective. So while ICP isn't a magic bullet that makes everything unhackable, it does fundamentally change the game by making entire categories of attacks impossible at the infrastructure level. The difference between constantly patching vulnerabilities versus building security into the foundation itself, that's the $10 trillion solution we've been looking for. Thanks for breaking this down, Claude. And to everyone watching, if you found this helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and drop a comment below. What do you think about ICP's security model? Is this the future of web applications, or are there concerns I should cover in a future video? Let me know. See you in the next one.